Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar, and this is a video on tuning your bass drum. Let's go. So here we have a 22 by 20 Sonar Beach Medium SQ2 bass drum. It's in Stradlewood High Gloss with ebony inside. So let's tune her up. First thing we have to do, obviously, is put a head on it. I've chosen an Evans Emad Clear with the thicker dampening ring because it's a big bass drum. I'm going for a punchy kind of rock sound. As I had mentioned before in the snare drum tuning video, I personally always line up my logo with the badge. That way, if I'm ever taking the head off and putting it back on again, I can seat it exactly the way it was to the bearing edge. Plus, with bass drums on the batter, generally you're going to have your beater patches, and this will ensure that they sit in the right place for your pedal. Another thing that you want to line up is whatever mechanism your company uses to protect your hoop from the, the pedal. So a lot of companies do it in a lot of different ways. Sonar uses, um, I guess, a little abrasive strip. Now that we have everything lined up, we're going to need to put our tension rods on. Now as with the snare drum video, we're not going to put any tension on the head yet. We're just going to take all the tension rods down to where they touch and make contact. Alright, from here, just like the snare drum video, we're going to tension the head up and stretch it just a little bit. While you're stretching the head, you want to make sure that it stays in tune all the way up. You might want to remove your dampening ring if you're using an EMAD at this point, so it'll be easier to hear when you're tuning it up. I'm going to use a mallet so that I don't hear much attack when I'm hitting the head. This way, I'm going to get pretty much just tone. My finger in the middle makes it so the only place that I'm really listening to is going to be the place that I'm hitting. You can't fully isolate it, but this makes it, this helps a little bit. You don't need to push, although you can. I think we should pull it up a little bit more. Let's do another turn. Now that we have it tensioned up higher than we would play it, it's time to do the other side. Let's leave it and let it stretch and just sort of sit at this for a little bit. Now before we get to actually putting on the resonant head, I've chosen a clear EQ1, which is technically a batter, and that's the reason that I chose that is because of the ebony veneer inside, I want to be able to see it. So one thing that we have to do for most modern bass drum sounds is we're going to need to cut a hole in the head. What I like to use is my holes speed cutter. This guy right here. This little tool makes it really easy to make a perfectly cut circle in your head without having to mess around with anything. You can just pick how big you want it with moving the pin in the middle. So what you need to do is take the holes cutter, pick where you want the edge of the hole to be with the cutting end, and from here, then you press in really hard and just spin it around a couple times and you've got yourself a hole. Simple as that. Now that we've placed the head in the right spot, it's time to put on the hoop and the tension rods. Alright, now that we have the rods to just where they're going to touch, same thing, let's stretch it out. One thing you're going to notice about the resonant side head is that with the port in it, it's going to make tuning it exactly kind of hard. This hole is going to affect how the tension works, so you have to pay attention to that. Alright, let's check on the batter head again. So, we just slapped the tension rods all the way off. Let's put them back to where they touch and actually tune it up a little bit. So that's pretty nice. And let's put our dampening ring back in. Alright, now let's attack the resonant head. Same thing. Alright, sounds pretty good. So here's the deal. When tuning a bass drum, for me, what I like to go for is I tune both heads very differently and for different reasons. My resonant head, I tune for the boom and the sustain of the bass drum if that's something that I want for the situation. The batter head, I tune for the attack, the punch, and how it feels. Combining the two gets your bass drum sound. Alright, so the next thing that we have to do is install the beater patch so that we don't break through our bass drum head easily. Personally, I've chosen the AF patch by Evans. 
I find they're really durable and they add a little bit of attack without really hindering your resonance. One thing to notice is when you're tuning up a bass drum, a lot of the time you're going to hear a sound that sounds almost like a bit of a tennis ball. There's an easy way to get rid of that and you don't need to affect your tuning or anything like that. What you want to do is take something small like a t-shirt or a dish towel, face cloth, something like that. And all you're going to do is you're going to put it in the drum and you don't even need to be touching any of the heads. So. I've got my t-shirt and I'm going to just honestly stick it in there. Now if you don't want to affect your tuning, just stick it down in there without touching either of the heads. As long as it's in the shell, it's going to take care of that tennis ball sound. Now if you want to deaden your bass drum just a little bit more, maybe take away a little bit of that resonance, you can prop it up against your batter head just a little bit. And that's going to just tone it down slightly. And of course if you want to tone it down more, you can put more in there. You can use the Evans EQ pillow or EQ pad, however you want to call it. You can also straight up use a pillow, blankets, whatever you want. The more dead, uh, the less rebound your batter head's going to have. So for a lot of double bass guys, that's something that you want. But for a lot of guys that want just a big open rock sound or people that are really into jazzier sounds, they're going to want more resonance out of their bass drum. And this is a good way to achieve that. I highly recommend that you listen to this video through good speakers or good headphones. The first thing to get lost through a lower end pair of speakers or crappy headphones or especially laptop speakers is the low end and that's what we're working on today. So make sure you listen to this through something appropriate. All right, so we've slapped the bass drum on the kit. Let's just hear what it sounds like after we ballparked it over there. Sounds pretty beefy. Not a ton of resonance, it's a good rock bass drum sound. Let's put it into some context. Let's hear what happens when we tune the batter head up. Interesting. Now's a good time to note that there's a couple different ways to play the bass drum. What I was just doing there was I was making sure the beater came right off the head. So when I was hitting it, I would make sure it bounced right back off, allowing the head to resonate. Now if I didn't do that, it makes a big difference. That's me pressing the beater into the head. It gives it a much more punchy, dead sound. Versus Now you can use that to change up your sections without having to change your part. So for example, if I did a verse with pushing the beater into the head and then a chorus opening it up, I don't have to change anything else and it sounds different. Let's hear what I'm talking about. when we turn the resonant head up a little bit. Let's hear the same effect with the front head back down. want 
even more attack without going to a trigger, you can start with a wood beater or something that's a hard plastic. That's going to give you a lot more just click than I'm getting right now because I'm using a felt beater. So the possibilities are really endless. Make sure you experiment with different batter and resonant head tensions and how they interact with each other to find your sound on the bass drum.